guys off of my mowers today. We're gonna be changing the studs and adjusting the valves on a Cushman truck stove. Enjoy. Two holes, you're gonna want a half inch socket. Could be an impact drill if you got one on impact wrench. A large screwdriver with a pretty large head. Half inch, preferably open, a closed end. And a feeler gauge and lots of paper towels. And if you can get them, two new seals for the valve cover. They go around here. I'll show you how that works in a little bit. I'll have a link for these down below. They're about $7 each. Uh, full fine thread nuts, some studs. I'll put the dimensions in the video here. And full eight cone nuts and full washers. And then, preferably, it would be this kind of not metal, but it's some kind of gasket type or an aluminum washer. But I'll, I only have steel ones, so for now, those will work. So, we'll go ahead and get started down there. So, we will start off with taking off the old two nuts to hold the valve cover on. And before we take this off, we're going to get some paper towels. Make sure you get all of this underneath the valve cover. Fill the paper towels because this will have a lot of oil in it. It's good if you don't run your engine, let the oil get go drain back into the engine before you do this. but. Just makes it a little bit more messy if it's been ran. Do that. It might leak off over here, so we'll put one on the ground too. Just pull this off quickly and tip it up so the oil doesn't leak everywhere. Like that, you can see there's a little bit. Those are the oil. So now that we have access to the valves, this is the intake valve and that's the exhaust valve. Intake comes in, goes into the cylinder, exhaust comes out, and kind of through this tube, you guys can barely see. So you want to take your fuel gauge, and I have 10,000 selected, and we can see this valve very loose. That's going to make a lot of ticking noise. So what you want to do is you want to spin the engine like that, and I can see this one is fully open, which will mean this one is going to have no pressure on it. And we can feel this, and we can see it is past 10,000. So, Take your large screwdriver and you want to take your half inch, preferably closed end, put it on this nut, grab this with the screwdriver, break this down and loosen it up. And then you can loosen this nut and then spin this in. It's going to put more pressure, it's going to close the gap on this. So now we can adjust the valves with this loose, knowing that it's way too much out of adjustment. In the manual, cushion recalls to about three to five thousandths adjustment slack in the rocker arm. So I like going in between, so we've got a four thousandths feeler gauge. And we can put it in here, take our large screwdriver, and spin this, making sure that the nut has a lot of, has been backed out a lot. Keep on moving the feeler gauge. And right there it stopped because I'm turning this in and tighten it up. So we're gonna move it till I can barely move it in there. Like that. That's good. Now you can take your half inch close end and you can put it on here. Make sure you don't tone this thing too much. And now you just put pressure this way, counterclockwise, and tone the wrench to tighten up. And it got a little tight, so we're going to go ahead and test it one more time. We can see it fits kind of snug, but it's pretty good actually where it is. So we'll go ahead and make sure that's pretty tight, and we'll move on to this valve. So 
So now let's start adjusting the intake valve, or you could be adjusting the exhaust valve right now. We're going to want to turn the engine till the exhaust valve opens fully, and we see that the intake valve is shut. Intake just closed, and exhaust is opening. Right about there was good. And take our full thousandths and see there is a little bit of slack in there. So go ahead and loosen that nut up. Just like that. And we can back the nut off a little bit. And we can get our screwdriver and our fueling gauge. Keep on doing this while we tone this. And it's stopped. Try it one more time. Right about there, it's good. So we'll take our clothes and the wrench, and we'll try to get that same spot, but counterclockwise on the screwdriver and tighten the wrench up. And it did just move it a little bit, so we're gonna try that again. And now that we have it adjusted, we're going to test it one more time. It is a little bit loose, so we'll go ahead and readjust it. There we go. Tone this nut out just a little bit. Get the fuel gauge. And right about there, it's good. Tighten this up. And we should be good. Oops. And again, we can test it one more time. That is pretty good. So, make sure that's tight all the way. And we should be good. Now we can change the studs here that hold the rocker arm and hold this valve cover. A common problem is you put your valve cover on, even though I have my studs backed out of the block, which could strip this, the threads in the block, it's very hard to get a nut on and a washer on. I've only got maybe a quarter inch here to put a washer and the nut on and get that tight. So, we're going to get our new studs here, like this, and here's the dimensions of it. And we can unfed these and fed the new ones in. Make sure you're going to do it one at a time so you don't drop your rocker arm out of here. So to do this, make sure you loosen up this nut here a little bit. And we can just take a second nut and thread that on. And you're going to make a jamming nut here or a locking nut. So take your wrench. I'm going to use this one just so I can slide it on like that, tighten these up, doesn't have to go very tight it's about that tight, and then you can take the stud right out the reason you don't have to get this super tight is because these usually aren't threaded too tight in there just because it might end up stripping it And there's the stud. There's also one little piece here that's rounded and it's got the flat for the nut to go on it. Just make sure you don't lose that. And we can take our new stud here, thread that into there, and take this little, you can call it a keep or something, put that on there. And then we're going to take a new nut, put this dog hair on it. Thread it on a little bit, and then we can get a second nut to make a locking nut. And it just barely started threading, so I'm just gonna hand thread it now, just so I don't strip the threads out or anything. That should be plenty tight. Now we'll back, back off this locking nut. Just a 
that, and then I'll use the drill to get this snug but not tight. Like that. And we can go ahead and tighten this on. It doesn't have to be too tight because it is just very small aluminum threads there. Just holding on a simple rock along. That should be good. We'll take this one out now. There's the stud. There's the little keeper part. And we can go ahead and grab our new stud. Make sure you put the, the not fine thread part, the coarse thread in. We don't want to put the fine thread into a coarse thread. <laughs> and we got one nut. We're going to have to find the second one here. Here's a new one. Put that on and put the old one on. I am replacing these nuts, just I'll have this apart. And just check both of these. There we have it. New studs and adjusted valves. So now we have cleaned this surface off and cleaned the valve cover surface off. And as you can see, I've got the installed new seal on it. You can see it sticks out quite a bit. That way it can compress. And the easiest way to do this is I've got just some regular gasket sealer or gasket maker. And you can just get down each corner here. And that will make it a lot easier to hold this gasket in. Be sure. You also get the bottom of this because the oil leaks out there, it doesn't leak up here when you take the valve cover off. If you don't have the new gasket, you can just use OTV. Make sure you have it facing up with the OMC. Start from the top, make your way around, go back up because the oil will not be leaking out of the top while you make the new seam. So, go ahead and install this. Get it on there. And we can get our washer. Two of them. Put those on. And two eight cone nuts. And we can tighten those up. It does seem that these eight cone nuts are 916, so I got the wrench here and we'll tighten this one up. Just a little bit. Tighten this one up a lot more, and then finish with tightening this one up. And as you can see, it already made itself loose. And check this one again. That one's pretty tight already, still. And that one's good. So there you have it. Got new studs in, adjusted valves, and new gaskets. So it should be good. All looking good. Go ahead and adjust the opposite side. So now you're Cushman. So run like this. Runs beautiful. And here we are in the truck store. Jack might be moving around a little bit. Should be mint. So, I hope you guys did enjoy this video. Knows. Sure, hope this video helped to anyone trying to adjust the valves and oh, changing the studs. Um, if I come across any other needs or things I want to point out on these Cushman truck stores, I will sure make a video of it. We've also got the spare engine, it's a 22 horse right here. We built this carburetor. Um, I've been laser cutting these gaskets out, so I might be able to sell some. I'm going to try to get that engine crammed in there and then take that one and rebuild it. Probably just going to buy new cylinder jugs because it comes with refurbished, I guess, cylinder jugs. Um, new valves and all of that stuff, guides, pistons, new pistons, new rings, new bearings, front bearings, back bearings, connecting rod bearings, and all the gaskets for 750 bucks. So if I need to rebuild this, I'll make a video of throwing that thing in there. So, stay tuned for more.